Welcome to Living Hope. In today's message, Equipped to Win, Dr. McLuhan teaches about the resources Holy Spirit has given us to overcome every challenge we face. One of the great truths presented in the Old Testament is that no matter what we are facing, the battle is the Lord's. The Holy Spirit will never lead you into a battle that he has not already equipped you to win. And Paul ends his letter to the Ephesians with an open invitation to rely on the strength of the Lord <clears throat> to face the challenges of life. There's no limit to the strength of the Lord that is available to his followers. Paul says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. The Holy Spirit, we invite Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit and infuse each of us with the strength of the Lord as we learn from the Apostle Paul how to wear the armor of the Lord that he is about to write about. At the close, there's a close connection between what Paul wrote and the riot that Paul faced in Ephesus and this teaching that we're about to receive today. The riot in Ephesus could have easily led to Paul's premature death, but God protected him through the wisdom of leaders who urged him not to go there. They wisely said, Paul, don't go in there. God will handle this for us. And indeed, he did. As we think about this magnificent theater seating over 25,000 people, what an incredible place uh, to preach the gospel as I have had the privilege of doing in Pastor Margaret and share the message of Jesus. Without Paul entering the magnificent theater in Ephesus, city officials ended the riot that lasted for two hours and sent the people home. I invite you to read about this fascinating story in Acts chapter 19. And out of that experience, Paul taught the Ephesians to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil, Acts chapter 6 and verse 11. The devil is always scheming, and his scheming is never good. You ever, as a parent, you'd say, things are a little too quiet in Johnny's room. Let me go see what's going on there. And the devil is just like that. He's always scheming when things get quiet. He is always scheming to bring you and me down. The devil is always seeking ways to rob peace from people and create disunity and confusion. Paul says that we need to see with more than our physical eyes because... We are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against rulers and against authorities and against cosmic powers over this present darkness, against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. What a mouthful. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. The battle, uh, 12. The battle is more than you see with your eyes. It is a spiritual battle. The problem is not your poverty. The problem is not your parents. The problem is not your siblings. The problem is not your teachers. The problem is not your classmates. The problem is not your relatives. The problem is not your coworker. The problem is not your boss. The problem is unseen. For everything visible and physical is preceded by something that is invisible and spiritual. And the visible and physical fruit is a covering for the invisible and spiritual root. And we want to attack our problems at the root level and not at the physical level. Uh, typically, scheming comes to light at a specific moment on a specific day. Paul calls that day an evil day. And when that moment comes, Paul reminds us that there is protection from heaven to stand firm, and having done all, keep standing. Paul says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, stand firm. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 13. I release into the congregation and to the audience today the strength of Holy Spirit 
the presence and comfort of God the Father and Jesus Christ to stand and to face whatever it is that you are being called upon to face. Some listening to this message can testify that God helped them to stand firm on their day. Some listening to this message are facing their evil day at this very moment. And for others, your day is still coming, but God will help you. Be encouraged to know that Holy Spirit has equipped you to stand and overcome with the strength of the Lord. Paul goes on to give us seven tools to overcome the invisible spiritual attacks that we faced. The first of these is the belt of truth. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 14. It is always difficult to wade through the murky pool of information and disinformation. In this invisible fight, we need to dwell on the known truth in the word of God. And here is the truth. You are loved and forgiven by the blood of Jesus. And what you are fighting for is not your identity. Your identity is that you are a well-loved child. You have a father in heaven who knows what you are facing, whatever it is. It's not about you. It's about something bigger. It's something for the kingdom of God, the king and his purposes. May God help you to live in the truth. Early in Ephesians, we heard you'll, uh, uh, you'll know the truth. Well, Jesus said you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Truth doesn't set you free. Knowing truth is what sets you free. We speak the truth in love to one another. That means we help people see who they are in Jesus, not what they've done wrong, but what Jesus has done for us. I gird about you and listening today, the belt of the truth of God's word to fill your life and to fuel you. You are who the word of God says you are and not who anyone else says you are. Next, Paul invites us to wear the breastplate of righteousness. In an invisible spiritual attack, it is our heart, the seat of our emotions, that is most at risk to take things personally when we are attacked. And whatever you're facing, feel the presence of God guarding and holding your heart. When Paul wrote to the Philippians, the word guard was actually the Roman garrison that was there. It's like a whole army of the angel of the Lord guarding your heart and your mind that's what God wants for you and for me. Stand, therefore, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 14. And that is your heart being protected by disinformation and by personal attacks. Come, Holy Spirit, wash fear and insecurity away from the hearts of people listening to this message. Feel your heart being held by the protection, by the hands of God. What a wonderful thing. Just put your heart in the hands of God. He is the best surgeon and protector of your heart and of your emotions. A third, Paul invites us to wear the shoes of the gospel of peace. Paul says, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 15. In the middle of an invisible spiritual battle, it is still possible to demonstrate the visible, physical presence of Jesus. It's possible to manifest the peace that only can be found in his presence. And even during our troubling times, we can lead people to know the Jesus that we know. In fact, troubling times are some of the best times for people to see what Jesus can do for you. Don't try to shut down your witness because you're under an attack. Turn it up. Magnify Jesus through your troubles. Paul told many stories about how the hardships that he faced advanced the message of the gospel. He said, my circumstances have advanced the gospel. And those circumstances were very negative. No matter what you're facing, you can advance the gospel. The glory of Jesus can be seen on you even in troubling times. The fourth piece of armor is the shield of faith. And Paul said, in all circumstances, in all circumstances, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith 
with which you may extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. How many of you got some darts coming at you? Just recently you've had some darts coming at you. This is Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16, and you can quench those with the shield of faith. Now, a Roman sh soldier's shield uh, was uh, to guard him against incoming fiery arrows. And so before the soldier went to battle, he would take his thick, heavy leather shield and soak it in water. Of course, it made it heavy. But as he held it up and as that incoming on-fire arrow hit the shield, the water in the shield extinguished the sting and the fire of that arrow. And so it is. The Holy Spirit wants to help us extinguish with our faith the fiery darts that are thrown at us when we are attacked. We need to soak in the presence of Holy Spirit and his protection over our hearts and over our minds for all the things that we face. And this brings us to the fifth weapon that Paul speaks about in this list, the protection of our minds. What is more important? It take the helmet of salvation, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 17. And the helmet of salvation transforms our minds from human thinking to divine thinking. And one of the most difficult things that we do is to think clearly in difficult times. It is hard to have clarity under tension and pressure. The shield of our faith protects our hearts and protects our minds from runaway thoughts. If you've had some runaway thoughts, maybe you came to church with runaway thoughts today. Maybe you're listening from wherever you are with runaway thoughts. I command those runaway thoughts to stop now in the name of Jesus. Put up your shield of faith and let the Holy Spirit stand and fight for you. The fifth weapon of faith listed, or the first five weapons of faith or weapons listed are all defensive weapons. Did you notice that? But the last two that we're about to hear are offensive weapons. These are the weapons that we use to ward off and to fight against the fiery darts of the enemy. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 19. Uh, the writer to Hebrews reminds us that the Word of God is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And at times when Paul wrote the Ephesians, uh, uh, he had the words of the Old Testament in his mind. He had memorized the Old Testament, and all of this teaching, he wasn't just pulling out of the hat. Surely the Spirit of God was giving him re revelation, but he was building on solid thoughts about spiritual warfare embedded in the Old Testament himself, itself. When Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil, and it wasn't the devil who took Jesus, by the way, into the desert. It was the Holy Spirit. Holy, Jesus d dusted the devil in the desert. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Write that down. Jesus dusted the devil in the desert. He was led by the Holy Spirit. And what did Jesus use? Deuteronomy, the word of God, in every temptation and every attack the enemy made into his life. Every seed of thought that was not from God, he defeated with a quote from Deuteronomy. The word of God is the best tool we have to defeat the devil. The devil hates the word of God. He does all he can to get us to question the word of God. And Satan twists it and tries to get people to weaken their confidence and belief in the word of God. And this is a good moment to say that Paul's teaching was based upon the teaching found in the book of Isaiah. It was Isaiah who said, he put on righteousness at a breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head. Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 17. It was Isaiah who said, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of him who brings the good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness and publishes salvation, who says, Your God reigns. <laughs> Whatever you're facing, your God reigns. Isaiah chapter 52. And verse 7, it was Isaiah who said, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our Lord will stand forever. Isaiah chapter 40, 
verse 8, I love telling, inviting people to pick up their Bibles and cell phones and whatever it is. You're holding in your hands eternity. The Word of God will make it out of the future of this world into time immemorial. The Word of God stands forever. There's no new Bible in heaven. The one you have now is the one they have in heaven. Isn't that a wonderful thing? And it will stand forever, and it is the power that you and I need. The standard is the Word of God, and it will endure forever. Uh, the seventh weapon Paul introduces us to in this section is prayer. One of Paul's favorite words is all, especially in the book of Ephesians. Only six chapters he uses it 36 times. Do you think that he's crazy about the word all? Praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance making supplication for all saints just four times right there in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18. Pray, saints, pray, pray, saints, pray at all times, in all circumstances, in all situations, for all requests that come to you. Sure, you can stand, but the word of God gives you guidance, and power of prayer changes things that you can't change on your own. Prayer changes the atmosphere that changes the circumstance that you and I are facing. Prayer changes us. Prayer changes our circumstances. Prayer changes the hearts of decision makers. Prayer changes the world. Paul wanted the Ephesians to pray about everything, and God wants you and me to pray about everything as well. Paul wanted the Ephesians to pray for him, and so he is in prison writing these powerful words. His circumstances are not good. He's chained to a Roman soldier, and he's making the use of that opportunity to speak powerfully. You can imagine a soldier come in and say, don't talk to me. Paul says, well, I'm going to talk to you. <laughs> so pray for him. He closes his teaching by saying, pray for me also that the words may be given to me to open my mouth and boldly proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that I may declare boldly as I ought to speak. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. I pray this over us today, gathered and everyone listening. I pray that the Lord will help you to open your mouth boldly, proclaim the mystery of the gospel, that me, whether you're in chains or not in chains, that you may declare boldly everything that Jesus has asked you to say for his glory. Paul first prayed that we would stand in the grace that God has given us. The best equipment, listen, the best equipment in the world cannot protect a lazy, undisciplined soldier. Rome gave him the best, but the soldier had to be his best. It's not God's fault if we don't know how to use the equipment he's given us. This equipment doesn't take training. It just takes practice. You don't have to learn how to pray. You just talk to God. Your faith, the size of a mustard seed, Jesus said, is enough. You have everything you need to defend the attacks that are coming upon your life right now. The word of God always works, but the word is not in you. If the word is not in you, you cannot draw it out when you need it the most. One time when I was arrested overseas, I did not have access to my Bible. It had been taken away. I realized just how much I needed the Word of God I had already memorized. And there are particular verses that just kept playing over and over and over again in my mind. When my anxious thoughts multiply within me, your consolations delight my soul. And whatever's run away in your mind today, I release this word to you out of Psalms. That when you multiply, when your anxious thoughts multiply, meditating on God will calm your spirit and delight your soul. The word guarded my heart and my mind through that ordeal and brought me home. You are equipped to win. You're equipped to win because you have the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the shoes of the gospel of peace, the sword, which is the word of God, 
and we're praying at all times in the spirit. Pray in tongues, pray with your mind, pray out loud, pray quietly, pray collectively, pray in the spirit. We bless you, Lord, for your presence and power. Release your power into the lives of people who are listening right, day, right now and right at this time. So what is your battle? Some are facing a health crisis. Some are facing a financial crisis. Some are facing an education crisis. Some are facing a financial or family crisis. What crisis are you facing right now? You're dissatisfied with your religion. Your religion does not offer you the power that you've heard is available to followers of Jesus. Turn to Jesus today for salvation. Thank him for what he's done for you. He died for you on the cross so that these pieces of spiritual protection can be yours and you can deploy them in the circumstances that you're facing Say, Jesus, thank you for dying for me in my place on the cross. I receive you as my Savior right now. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill this one who just cried out to you. And by your Spirit, turn their circumstances so the hand of God will be seen in their lives, provision made for them. You need a healing today. We release healing in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Put your hand wherever your hurt is, wherever your wound is. Cancer, go in the name of Jesus. Eyes be opened in the name of Jesus. Ears be opened right now in the name of Jesus. Hearts be open to receive all that God has for you to receive in this message. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, thank you for giving us the equipment we need to face everything that comes our way. Forgive us for times when we've been lazy or undisciplined and have not practiced the things that you gave to us. Help us right now to determine that we will practice the weapons that you've given to us, Lord, so that we stand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving us this opportunity, Lord. Have your way in us, Lord, that we might... Overcome the enemy and bring you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.